so what did you learn in these various camps? What did you see on the first day? So Kim, what we saw was, was that each camp had its own flavor. Uh, there was camps where clearly there were people with more money coming through and there were slightly more services and resources there. And then there were camps where very poor people would come through. Now, the, let's talk about the human interest story. We saw people who were yearning and struggling to be free, like the classic story, right? There were people, they weren't, they weren't seeking asylum. These aren't political people. These were economic people, refugees who are saying, I think there's a better life somewhere. And they've gotten the green light somehow. And so, so they're coming up, right? Okay. Talked to some really wonderful people from uh, a Haitian who'd been living in Chile for seven years and decided, well, now's the time. And he had his five-year-old daughter with him. So she didn't know anything but Chile. She's Chilean at this point. Mm -hmm. And dad suddenly said, time to go to America. And so, you know, they start this very long, very expensive journey. Uh, by the time somebody ends up in one of these camps, if they can afford to pay the $40 to take the boat to the next stop, and then the $40, $50, $60, $70 to take the bus that will take them to the uh, Costa Rican border, and then the next chunk of change to get them through up to, and so on, um, as they come up all the way through the chain. They said it was like three to $5,000 per person to sort of make that journey wow. from there. Uh, and so when you imagine that a million people come through, Three to five thousand. We're talking three to five billion dollars wow. at that point. So, so we're talking big money. And there were um, so one element of the story are these wonderful people who who just want to leave, think they have a better life. And on top of that, there's all kinds of predators and coyotes and gangs and um, UN and and NGOs, which is another layer of this whole thing. There were sixty one NGOs all clustered in this area. You could go into one of these camps, Kim, which had like barely anything going on, trash everywhere, chickens running around. And there's a Western Union stood up right in the center of this thing so that people could, you know, get more money from somewhere to continue this longer journey. So there was definitely an economic component to this happening as well. Yeah. So for the most part, the people that you met, is that is that kind of the sentiment you got in all the camps? How many did you visit in total, did you say? Uh, we visited three camps. Three camps, okay. Three of these camps. So, yeah. and how many people were at each camp, would you say? Oh, it's hard to say. The first one, I, I would guess there were probably four or 500 total. There was another camp. There must have been thousands there. The average stay was just hours. These people yeah. would come out of the jungle, you know, get get stocked up, drink some water, get on something and off they would go. But some we met some people there. We met some um, Africans who were from Ghana who had been in camp because they didn't have money. They'd been there 18 days trying to raise some money. And so they there's little some stuff that the NGOs will say, well, if you pick up trash for a day, it's five dollars or something. So they were working. Uh, the that was the longest I talked to somebody who'd been stuck there for 18 days. Some people were only there for a matter of hours. And one person had told me that they had heard from a Chinese person. The Chinese were very reticent to talk to us. They either wouldn't or they said they didn't speak any English, which mm -hmm. we weren't quite sure if that was true. But they, they were they were the most closed people. Um, we heard from somebody else. They'd heard from a Chinese person that the average duration from that camp to being in New York City with a driver's license is 10 days. I mean, this it's is a, it's a, what I'm yeah. trying to establish here. It's a route now. Yeah. This isn't like yeah. some people stumble around and they 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 claw their way north. There, there's a there's a whole this is like a it's a business now. It's set up it's and an it industry. sounds like it's it's like, you know, what each point is, you know, how much it costs. Like it's a it's set up as an industry mm -hmm. completely. Yep. Yep. And, and people are coming from all over the world. So these Chinese people, were they coming from, because I know there's a lot of Chinese all around in, living in, you know, Chinese ethnic, but they might be born, you know, in Brazil, let's say. And so are these people from China? Were you able to kind of figure that out? Or are they, or were they living in South America for quite some time prior to this point? No, these are people from China, from mainland. Um, and we, we understood some of the routes that, that a few of them got there uh, from I would say there were, again, there were, there were two or three flavors. Um, there were clearly middle-class uh, Chinese people uh, there who, uh, their, their clothes, their cell phones, their shoes, all of it just spoke to like middle-class, higher middle-class. Like some of them had a nicer jacket than I, you know, a, a, a you know, sport coat kind of a thing. I was like, wow, that's nice clothes. Um, and there were a few people there from China uh, who looked, clearly had military demeanor, um, very well muscled. We saw a couple guys coming out of a shower you know, tattoos, uh, that sort of stiff demeanor, uh, very not, not willing to talk to anybody whatsoever, um, obviously. So, they, but they were, uh, for the most part, it's clear that they fly in 
from mainland China. And we actually saw a video that had been produced and it looks like a, Kim, it looked like a, um, a tourism video mm -hmm. when it was translated for us. It was like, there's this exciting adventure you get to go on and it had good music and it showed all these people wearing life jackets in a boat with thumbs up who are from China. And, and, it, and it was very engaging. I was like, go on an adventure is how they had phrased it. Um, and so, so the, the ratio we saw was probably nine or 10 males for every female from China. Uh, but there were people there from Afghanistan, Africa, Middle East, all over South America, you name it. Um, How are they didn't getting see there? And not only that, but if you're a middle class Chinese, why don't you just fly into the United States? I mean, if you're going to come in illegally, just fly in and stay. It, that's a great. I think some <laughs> do. Um, but but it's a great question. Like, why are why is whoever's doing this, the NGOs, whoever? Why are they making these people go through this arduous thing? Like, why make them come into South America and through this really treacherous piece of jungle, right? There's a, a continental divide that exists there. And it's, you know, the mountains are about 1,300 meters. So that's 4,000 feet. And when they were coming through in, in October, November, December, it would get in the 40s. You know, this is, you know. But then they're sleeping on the ground and all their heat stealing away. And, and a lot of people died a lot uh, in that portion of the journey. It's like, well, why not just fly into LAX? I don't, what's the... Right. It was mysterious. I, I don't have a good answer to that. And you still don't one. know why they would choose to to go this way. I mean, one of my, my thinking would be, are they offered papers through this route to where they look like they're not illegal once they get here to the United States? Is that like part of the deal? Um, or is it that they have criminal records and they're not able to fly in? They wouldn't pass through the background checks. That's obviously extremely alarming. Um, you know, like what, what is it? What is the reason, especially if they're middle-class, like why not just buy an airline ticket? They're not that, I mean, if this is going to cost you however, the amount you said, like three to five grand, that's way more than any airline ticket to go anywhere in the well, world, really. Well, that's the mysterious part. Cause you and I both know that when you fly out and you fly back in, you got to go through border in customs, right? And they're, they're pretty serious about it, right? They check everything out. They ask you questions and, you know, you have to have a, a, a passport, all of that. Whereas we know that if you come in through this southern route and you come across the border in Texas, none of that's required. Right. You're met. You're met at that border with somebody who says, oh, hey, so glad you're here. We don't need anything from you in terms of ID or retinal scans or anything. Right. Here's a cell phone. Here's a ticket. Where would you like to go? It's a sure. totally So I guess you're totally process. undetected. You're completely undetected. Whereas if you fly in, there is a record of you. And then if you yeah. stick around and you and you over your, and you stay longer than you're supposed to, there's a record at least of you being there. Okay, so that might be one of the reasons why people then choose to go this long, arduous, dangerous route rather than just flying is because it re allows them to remain completely undetected. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and at that first camp we went to, there was a, a whiteboard with some numbers, and that camp had processed over sixty eight thousand people through that one camp that had come through that route. Other camps had vastly more people than that. So, so we saw that in the United States, however they came, whatever routes um, up through that, they, uh, 300,000 people crossed in December coming into Texas across the border. Wow. It, that's normally the number in a year, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, that's, and now that's a month. That was a month. And again, uh, you met some guys from Afghanistan, really nice, good English, um, probably former translators who, who knew, but, you know, they were of an age where they had grown up with only Americans occupying their country. Yeah. Uh, super nice people. And, and, and yet, you know, they're going to, we don't know who's coming across the border. And there was just a case. It was on Twitter where some guy said, you'll find out who I am. And yeah. somebody figured out this is a known terrorist who had been released and came up through that route. So this is, we know that's happening that undesirables are coming up. And sure. we also know that a number of South American countries said, oh, great time to empty our prisons out and send the you know choice, finish out your sentence, head north, right? And so a lot of people took the head north option. Um, again, that's the difference between migration and immigration. Immigration, that's not possible. You come through a very, very stiff process uh, that asks a lot of questions.